So with confirmation coming yesterday that Steve Cooper was sacked, we now know the details about how this happened. And it sounds like it got ugly. Welcome to your Forest News. Good morning, good evening or good night. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome to your latest Nottingham Forest news. Coming up in this episode, we will talk to you about the truth behind the whole sacking of Steve Cooper, how it happened, who sacked him, when did it start and how we ended up where we are now. If you're enjoying the content, if you're coming to terms with everything that's happened, start us off by hitting that like button. Make sure you subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And let's jump into this. And we've got to start really at the source of all of this, which was Luton. Luton was the key catalyst. Now, when we tell you stuff on this channel, we are always telling you stuff that's either sourced because we will say what we're saying is true. If it's rumors, we will state it's rumors. When we came out after the Luton match and we told you that Maranakis was fuming, fuming to the point where considerations were happening on Steve Cooper's future, we meant what we were saying. And that's exactly where this saga started. Maranakis was, I, I think, and this is me just getting into the mind of Maranakis now, I think he was close. And if there was enough, should we say, turning of the fan base on it he may have done it there and then because that's how triggered he was but for me that was the first seed the first seed in Maranakis and where he decided that it was time to start thinking about things now from that point on it seems like the relationship between Cooper and Maranakis broke down we know it was already very staggered you could see it from the body chemistry towards the last couple of games at the end of the last season especially when they were out on the pitch that the chemistry wasn't there. And that was off the back of recruitment and things like that, as has come out plenty of times in the media and plenty of times as we told you about the likes of Chris Wood, etc. So that was one thing. Then there was also the talk about Steve Cooper after, I think, the first game of the season after Arsenal, where basically he was talking like he wasn't happy with the recruitment. And that in itself triggered Maranakis. So, in essence, you could say this goes all the way back to the start of the season. And how should Maranakis feel about this? Literally, he's just pumped in another hundred odd million into transfers. He's then seeing his manager not being thankful for the players he's brought in. Forget whether or not you think they were good signings or not. Just look at the money that Maranakis is pumping in and get your mindset into how Maranakis is thinking. That was at the start of the season. Then we get to Luton and that happens. And then, of course, there's the incident at Fulham. Obviously, Forrest get tonked 5-0. And then the whole thing with Maranakis leaving after 74 minutes or so, chucking his pass into a garden, etc. And at that stage, this is where Maranakis is seriously considering Zach and Cooper. And this is where the story starts with the likes of the communications into Lopetegui. Um, it looks like Lopetegui couldn't be convinced to come to Nottingham Forest. So you can surmise from that that Lopetegui was the first choice. But all of this time, Cooper's clearly aware of the unrest. And something that I guess no one really picked up on in Cooper's pre-match presses was when he was being asked whether or not he's been told or um, said he's safe in his job, etc. And every time he talked about it, he never said that he had sat down with Maranakis. There's either Maranakis Jr. or maybe he'd spoken to Russ Wilson, etc. And we know now the communication line between Steve Cooper and Maranakis was so thin that they barely spoke over the last few weeks at all. To the point where people from senior management positions were coming out and the initial story was that they were trying to plead with Maranakis to let Cooper stay. There was talks that the other senior members of Cooper's management team, etc. But what actually happened was these teams were then, these people, sorry, were trying to get them to start talking again. But the relationship had become so untenable that it was, that was it. It wasn't going to go any further. It's at this stage that Cooper clearly knows he's done, but he just doesn't know when. 
or by who, because again, he hasn't spoken to Marinakis at all. And this takes us into Cooper's stage now. So let's move this on from Cooper's perspective currently, what happened? And we'll probably bring this to where it really starts with Cooper, which is probably after the Fulham match where we lost 5-0. I hate reminding myself of that. And we saw the hands going up, the crowd singing his name, etc. It's that, that stage that he clearly thinks his neck is on the line and he's going to do well to survive. And it looks like because uh, Lopetegui didn't want to go ahead or whatever happened in that negotiation broke down, Maranakis wasn't looking to sack him until he had someone ready and in place. But this was coming. And the relationship got so bad that Maranakis himself, who flew in um, to Nottingham, wasn't to sack Cooper. This was the other day. It was to negotiate with Nuno. He sent Ross Wilson to deliver the message to Cooper. He, he didn't even do it himself. That shows you how fractured the relationship was. And he was only in Nottingham to look ahead, to look ahead to Nuno. And that, that tells you, like, this was, this was a done deal. This was going to happen. There was no way a relationship like this was ever going to survive. And Cooper knew it was coming. Now, this happened, obviously, on the Monday. So uh, the players were not in training, as in yesterday. Uh, sorry, two days ago. And what that meant was that when Cooper was told to go, it was around lunchtime, I believe, on Monday, that he hadn't even had a chance to say his goodbyes to the players, just the staff that were in and around there. So apparently Cooper will be back in today to have a proper send off um, with the players, with um, the rest of the staff, etc. that he hasn't spoken to. But Maranakis and Cooper, the relationship was absolutely severed. It sounds like it got really, really bad. And as I said at the start of the video, this was something that's been building for a while from last season to the start of this season with the talk of the transfers to the performances on the pitch. To everything else. And as I always say, the club has to come first. Maranakis owns the club. He is basically part of that club. He is the one who's invested the money into the club. His say is always going to be the final say. The loser in this battle was always going to be Steve Cooper. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. And I think it's important that this relationship with Nuno gets off onto a strong foot. We're probably going to see all of Steve Cooper's backroom staff go with him and then Nuno looking to bring his guys alongside him. And I mean, what happens to the new set piece coach, for example? Was he brought in under the Cooper regime or was he brought in with the idea of a new manager coming in mind? Could he be one of the shortest lives, poor guy, um, in terms of tenures in a position there? I think he will survive, but we will have to wait and see. And on top of that, we saw the breakdown as well between Cooper and certain factions of the player, the players. As we mentioned yesterday, the whole Worrell thing ended up in a huge argument between Cooper. Worrell didn't turn up for one of the matches. We covered the full story off on the live stream yesterday. And in the end, he was sent away with McKenna to train with the under 23s. Now, the McKenna side of it obviously was contractual. It was nothing to do with a bust up at all. But we have seen these player rebels or these arguments between manager and player plenty over the last year. Look at Shelby, look at the players that were shunned out, Yabardes, Omar Richards being sent away, Lewis O'Brien with all the backstory behind him, Dennis, Dennis never felt he got a chance of Cooper and that relationship was severed as well. So from above Cooper, there was issues with relationships. If we have a look at Scarpa with his crypto issues and everything else and Cooper not giving him a chance and then he got shipped off to Olympiakos. The whole thing now, as, as you look at it, seems to be un unraveled or has unraveled. But what did Cooper do? Cooper played to his strengths and what was his strength? It was the fan base. Every time his back was against the wall, he rallied his fan base around him to ensure that he had that support. And that was the support that kept him in his job after Leicester last year, after Leeds last year, after potentially Luton this year as well. But it got to the stage where enough became enough for Maranakis, both off the pitch and on the pitch. He wasn't liking what he was seeing. And that brings us up to where we are now. 
So in a way, in a way, this needed to happen. Once the relationship gets to this stage, the club is never going to run smoothly. It's so important that off the pitch, everyone's singing off the same hymn sheet, which will filter down to on the pitch and hopefully performances on the pitch. This is the rough outline of everything. There's obviously more details to it and everything else, but I thought it was important that everyone gets to know what's happened here. Now, where do you guys sit, I guess, is my question to you. Do you think Marinakis was in the right? Do you think Cooper was in the right? Or do you think they were both in the wrong and should have been adults and talked it through and found some kind of solution? For me personally, I wish Cooper every bit of success going forward. Obviously not at the detriment of Nottingham Forest. But I do think this is the right move. And I do think Nuno will come in. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping he can replicate what he did at Wolves. We'll be giving you so much information on Nuno, his background, his tactics, how he can implement those tactics in Forest. Everyone talking about, oh, Nuno's another low block manager. Well, they clearly don't know his style or haven't watched him enough or had a proper look into historically what he has done. That's all coming up for you on the channel. So make sure you're tuned in for that. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to FFTV if you are new and give us your thoughts down in the comments below on what you think of this whole story. And if you didn't catch the Gore stream last night, go have a look at it as we get through all the details about everything that's happened in the last 24 hours. Thank you for watching. Come on, you Reds.